Jim here, I'm back, thanks for joining in. This is the channel to come to if you want scuba information and once in a while to be entertained. This is the last section break from the scuba gases lecture. Today's topic, why helium? This is a brief overview, why deep divers use helium. Stay tuned, here it comes. To the rescue, helium. So here's helium. You know, and as, as you remember, helium was the least soluble gas in that uh, olive oil. <laughs> it was the least soluble gas in the olive oil. Um, so, you know, early on, helium was, uh, you know, was discouraged, as was nitrox. Nitrox, what, voodoo gas was the early, uh, so helium was uh, early on not kind of frowned upon. However, divers who were experimenting with it were feeling better after uh, decompression dives. And what does that mean, better? Right. So um, one of the things that we saw there as a, as a symptom of decompression illness is um, fatigue. It's hard to quantify, right? If you have a big day of diving, you're going to be fatigued. But so unreasonable fatigue for what you've done. And I guess that's just a judgment on your own. However, uh, there is evidence that uh, micro bubbles in your system, you know, hopefully you've, you've read about this in your open water course or advanced course, right? Micro bubbles in your system somehow cause fatigue and that's not well understood either. Put that on the list of what the heck. Um, so fatigue, people on uh, diving helium experienced less fatigue and that's one of the ways they felt better. Right, so these are some of the advantages of helium. It's small, it diffuses faster. Um, yeah, this 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 one is a, is a factor I'm not going to talk about, but there there is some uh, debate about the interplay between helium, oxygen, and nitrogen. So if you're so for example, if you're uh, diving relatively lower percentages of nitrogen deep, right, in a in a mix that we're going to talk about next, and then if you go to deco and your deco gases have high percentages of the nitrogen, that could be bad. So very often helium divers will on their deco stage, avoid nitrogen totally. Um, it's efficient, minimizes risk. In some ways, it creates other risks, to be fair. And yeah, it's totally transformed technical diving. And the reason is, let's see, I huh, almost told the answers here. Yeah, deep air is dead until helium runs out. <laughs> there's always, as long as I've been a technical diver and before, there's always been this problem that, that helium's running out. Um, so the US used to have a strategic helium reserve. So somewhere there was this giant helium farm and the, the U.S. would keep that because helium used to be for, for technical and military and highly scientific uses. It has very specific uses and I guess those uses haven't become as important. The U.S. stopped keeping their stockpile and you know the, the world um, oh, and the source where helium comes from is, uh, I think, the most common source. It's a product of, of uh, radioactive decay, I think, is the most common uh, source. And it's very often found um, in gas, natural gas mines. It comes up with natural gas. Some outfits collect that and some just let it go. And helium is so light and so small that it actually very often diffuses out through the atmosphere into space. <laughs> we lose it. So, yeah. I am going to say one more thing about this slide. One more thing I didn't mention, I did mention about helium going away and what I'm gonna come back with. Maybe I did mention that uh, hydrogen has been proposed as a substitute for helium. Now in one sense, I understand that. It's a small molecule. It's gonna move around easily. Uh, it's gonna be, because it's small, it's gonna re resist being dense in breathing. It's gonna be a low work of breathing. Uh, what else? Uh, it's going to diffuse in and out very quickly. Uh, however, I think we all know that hydrogen, hydrogen has some pretty questionable attributes. So, for example, um, I think on the initial slide, it, it's uh, kind of narcotic, actually, wasn't it? Well, it, its solubility in lipids suggests that it might be kind of narcotic. So I don't know about that. I Jury's out for me. I'm happy to hear whatever information. However, think about this. Think about a mix of gas where you have pure oxygen in there and then you're putting P 
pure hydrogen and, and helium. So the helium's okay, but you have a mixture of pure oxygen, pure helium. Now, those of you with even a rudimentary sense of chemistry out there know that those two gases together are kind of just a recipe for disaster waiting to happen. So I don't know. Anyway, pretty interesting aside, right? Helium advantages, right? So it diffuses faster than nitrogen. So it goes into your bloodstream and into your body faster. Conversely, it gets out of your body faster. So theoretically, deco times would be reduced, which is in fact the case. It's less, much, much, much less uh, narcotic than nitrogen, uh, one fourth, and the bubbles are smaller, so easier to filter out and less effect on your body. Reduce, re now this is very important, reduced physical resistance in the breathing system. This is one of the main, at, at super depths, like, you know, 100 meters-ish, uh, this becomes a major factor that it keeps the work of breathing very low. Helium divers uh, have a better decompression experience. Now, advantages, other advantages and disadvantages. So, this is funny, easy to learn. I guess that's easy. <laughs> I don't know. Some of the deco courses I've had have been pretty, pretty difficult. I mean, yeah, just breathe oxygen is easy, but the calculations and whatnot. Reduce the narcosis, absolutely easy to breathe. Yeah, easy to mix, I guess. <laughs> I mean, if, if you have access, in Japan, it's not easy. Uh, I guess if you have access, it's easy. Uh, it can be used at any depth, yeah, but we'll talk about that. I mean, the expense is a factor now. Uh, more efficient decompression, yep. Less tissue insult, yep. Uh, however, let's look at the disadvantages. So more expensive, definitely. Uh, so this is funny, meticulous planning. So on, on the one side, it says easy to learn, but then, oops, but then meticulous planning. So I guess if, metic if meticulous planning is easy to learn for you, that it's easy to learn. Uh, higher skill level requirements, <laughs> again. So if those, so it kind of goes against the easy to learn, doesn't it? Uh, more helium, yeah, 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 inappropriate. Now, this last one is, is very true, and we're gonna talk about that later. Uh, it's inappropriate for dry suit gas, so why is that? So, it's a small molecule, it does not hold heat well. So, in your suit, if, if you're filling your suit with, with helium, um, it's, it's bad because it will not hold the heat of your body. It, it, it's become, your dry suit becomes a less efficient insulator, a less efficient insulator against the, the water outside, presumably cold water. So it's not good for that. I've also heard that um, having the, the, for very deep dives and for very strict deco, that the gas that's in your dry suit can permeate into your body. So if you, if, if your suit were filled with helium or filled with a nitrogen gas, um, that could be interfering with your deco plan because you're, you're, you're intaking more gas than would normally be. So how do we combat that? I'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, so helium, 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 helium. So deep helium is safer than deep air. Absolutely. You know, if you're, if you're doing deep dives, I think there's still extended range courses out there, but you know, really, you know, because of nitrogen and CO2 and the way those interplay, I definitely recommend if, if you like deep diving, have a look at helium, a helium course. Okay, so let's have a look at the lay of the land that we covered here. Nitrox, oxygen enriched, uh, generally over 21%, although not necessarily, but for recreational use, yes, right? And it's, uh, so it's going to be 21 to 40% is generally what nitrox certifications will cover regular nitrox up to 40 percent and it's for 40 meters or less right? um heli trox maybe you've heard this uh so a helium based helium based nitrox so o2 is greater than 21 percent just like nitrox. basically it's nitrox plus helium right technical diving to 46 meters so we're taking out some of the nitrogen for sure and replacing that with helium so you're reducing the narcotic factor but of course if you're going to 46 meters you would have to adjust the oxygen percentage to make sure you weren't going over 1.4 of ppo2 right in fact you could calculate that out as an exercise what what percentage of o2 would that be uh, 46 meters would be 5.6 uh, ata so you could put it into the circle square and you know you want 1.4 up top so you could solve for the oxygen percentage uh, over here 
what would that oxygen percentage be that would get you to 1.4 PPO2 at 46 meters or 150 feet? Why don't you calculate that? I might put the answer up here. And trimix, I think we've all heard of. So it's a helium, oxygen, nitrogen mix. So it's Helitrox, right? Um, and generally, with trimix, the oxygen percentage is lower than 21% because we're going deep, right? So as we go deeper, we have to reduce the PPO2 of the oxygen so we don't get the CNS poisoning, right? Technical diving to 91 meters. Why does it say 91 meters? And heliox. I, th I threw these up there because I've heard all these different names, so helium and oxygen mix, I don't know. I, I've never used it, but I, I, there are courses out there, so I just thought. So technically speaking, it's just a heliox, right, as opposed to heliotrox. So just put it on there, just so you've heard the names. All right, so what is what is trimix, right? In my, in my experience, usually trimix is a lowered oxygen percentage, right, adds helium. Uh, and has a lower O2 percent, so it's, it's lower lower nitrogen as well, obviously, because you've added the helium. Usually like 18 percent oxygen is a, is a common nitro, uh, trimix I've used, but let's have a look here. I mean, uh, reduce narcosis and reduce oxygen toxicity. However, they are showing here hyperoxic trimix. I think it's my experience pretty rare, but could be more than 21 percent. Um, normoxic, so 16 to 21 percent. This is what I've used yeah, normoxic, as I said, this is where I've been, and hypoxic, so going deep, going deep, less than 16%, uh, yeah, for extremely deep diving. So actually, why don't you, here, here's a good, here's a good exercise to try yourself out on uh, for 100 meters, so 11 ATA, what percentage of oxygen are you going to need to mix your trimix to in order to maintain 1.4 PPO2? So you got 1.4 divided by, what did I say, 11, 11 ATA, 1.4 divided by 11 equals, so by my calculation, that's 13% of oxygen, right? So if you're going to 100 meters, actually, actually it's not, a, it, it's 12.7, so call it 12, because you don't want to round up, in that case, you want to round down. So at 100 meters, 11 ATA, your, to keep at 1.4 of PPO2, a partial pressure of oxygen, your percent of oxygen in your breathing gas would have to be 12% or less. Wow. All right, which, which, that brings up a quick topic I wanna to talk about that I forgot to add here, travel gas. Now, let's imagine that the back gas that you had was 12% trimix, so 12% plus some helium plus some nitrogen, and you, if you just dove off the boat and tried to swim down to 100 meters with 12% oxygen, what's going to happen, <laughs> right? We already said that below 16% at one atmosphere, um, you're going to get wonky, right? And like really wonky at 12%. At, at so Depending on how shallow you are, if you are, especially if you're working hard, you know, I've, I've heard cases where people did not have a travel gas. They just used their back gas and they were trying to get down to depth fast to increase the partial pressure of their mix. So it was above where they would pass out uh, and they didn't make it, <laughs> right? So in that case, they'll have a travel gas. Maybe they're using one of their deco gases that they have, or maybe there's another stage that is designed for them to get down to I don't know. I've never used the travel gas, but maybe they're going to breathe this gas here until they're down to 15 meters and then continue on their back gas. I don't know. But uh, some of these mixes, the percentage will get low enough that they will not be able to breathe it up near the surface. So try mix for deep diving. Right, it's written uh, by the, so 1640, they just list the oxygen and the helium and you consider the rest as nitrogen. So 1640, 16% oxygen, 40% nitrogen. Yeah, heli-air, mixture of air and helium, okay. I don't know, again, it was something I saw in a certification, I thought I put it up here. Helitrox, right, so 2617. And, ah, here, <laughs> here was the, uh, here was the, here was the one I wanted you to calculate, right? 
um, and I already calculated it for you. So, yeah. So well, that, that's a good one, right? At, at 100 meters, what is the percentage? Okay, I hope you got something out of that. Maybe some of you are thinking about tech down the line. Maybe this is a good little preview of what you will be in for. Or maybe you're not into tech, you're just thinking, hey, why do people talk about helium? Now I know. Thanks a lot. If you got some value out of this, please go ahead, smash a like, leave a comment, share it with, with a buddy or a group that you think would be interested. Thanks again, and I will see you on the beach.